Shotgun Storyworthy is back this Friday night, April 18th at I.O. West in Hollywood. The show starts at 7 o'clock on the main stage, and it is free. It's an all-play, so come on down and spin that wheel. That's right, folks. Everybody gets to play. And you know, Hannes, it's happy hour, too. And admission is free, so what? you can spend all your money on drinks and then come up and make a fool of yourself. It'll be great. It's a win-win situation. We'll see you guys Friday, April 18th at 7 o'clock at I.O. West. Hey, folks, this is Hannes Finney from the Storyworthy Podcast, and we want to thank you for your support. We want to thank you for listening. And you know what? The only way for us to grow is for you to tell your friends, tell your family, tell people you don't even like. We need you to get the word out there about Storyworthy. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. This episode of Storyworthy is brought to you by GoDaddy. Don't let someone steal your great idea. Register a domain name now and put your idea online. GoDaddy's offering one new or transfer.com for the low price of $2.95. So whether you're building your dream business or starting a website for fun, visit GoDaddy.com and enter the code STORY295 at checkout. Some limitations apply. See website for details. Don't forget, you guys, visit GoDaddy.com and enter the code STORY295 at checkout, and you are supporting this podcast. Hey, it's Penelope Lombard. I'm here with Christine and Hannes. I'm keeping things on the DL at Storyworthy. Welcome to the Storyworthy Podcast. Here are your hosts, Christine Blackburn and Hannes Finney. Welcome to Storyworthy. My name is Christine Blackburn and I'm here with Hannes Finney. We are at the State Capitol Building in Tallahassee, Florida. Woo! Why? Because of a recent law that they passed that produced this headline. The problem with Florida's python hunt is snake assassination. (laughs) And that headline to me encompasses all that is great slash horrible about the state of Florida. Well, okay. Our guest tonight is Penelope Lombard, comedian Penelope Lombard. And she brings forth the topic, Trouble in Florida. Yeah, so you know what? It's like if you push, if you go to Google and you even type in something like, why is Florida, before you type on any other letter, it'll come up. So crazy. Yeah. So hot. So weird. Right. So yeah. Trouble like Florida, in Florida is like, a redundancy to me. Yeah, I assume kinda, that you're from Florida. You're in trouble. It's the end of the joke is what it is. Yeah. It's just I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't know if, if I wonder if we have listeners in Florida. Let us know. Call it. Let us know at info at Storyworthy. It's like, is it really as crazy as we think it is? Or is it just like people used to think they're like, oh, California is insane. You're not spending your whole time in California dodging mudslides and stuff. But it, Florida seems to be completely insane at all times. Florida is a state of extremes is what it is, Hannes. It has the most bugs. It has the highest identity theft rate in the nation. It has the flattest roads and the worst elderly drivers. The flattest roads. And it had all the elderly drivers, which yeah. is seriously a problem. I mean, because that's one of the biggest problems on the road is the way people drive. Right, and people will not stop driving. Well, they won't because it yeah. gives up their independency and their freedom. Yeah, exactly. I remember, yeah. you know, my father, as you know, recently passed away. And when he stopped driving this past fall, little 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 a note in my head went off that said, trouble ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, like if, if my dad's not driving anymore... We got less than six months to live here, folks. I mean, yeah, there's no way yeah. driving. You don't. You don't give it up. Yeah, exactly. No, and I know I'm. I'm complaining now, but I'm sure when I'm 90, I'll be like. When you're well, 90. first of all, I'll probably be driving the same car I am now, but uh, <laughs> it'll Volvo, be worth a million man. dollars by then. That thing. That thing. Fucking is Volvo. A beast. Yeah, that's a yeah. The Volvo is a big square block of just steel. And Swedish know-how. Pensacola and Jacksonville, Florida, rank in the top ten nationally uh, nationally places for most toxic drinking water. <laughs> Which apparently you had some before you said that sentence. <laughs> no, but yes. so two cities in the same state have extremely toxic drinking water. Yeah, it's like they're they've got that old like you know sort of independent thing. Like we don't need no government regulation. Well. And- they are. The native Floridians are often, they'll take off their hat if they hear a Leonard Skinner song. 
<laughs> but uh, but if they see Barack Obama, they'll put on their hat and put up their <laughs> finger. All right. So Florida, that's the that's the topic. The trouble in Florida. You know, you can you can go online, like I said, and just type in anything about Florida, and these wacky stories are going to come out. Yeah, and so, now they've got this whole you know the defend you stand your ground rule, a law where people can just shoot you for just irritating them, basically. Well, which sounds like something yeah. I would like. But it turns out uh, not so good in, in practice. Well, here's what's something funny about that. Florida's justice system cannot shake its inescapable racist reputation. Now, this is something I looked up, obviously. Yes. Uh, it's not just that the Trayvon Martin prosecution team could not convict George Zimmerman. The same prosecutor sent a black woman, a young mother, to jail for 20 years for firing a warning shot after her husband, a known domestic abuser, threatened her. Right. And she it's goes like, to jail for 20 years. Yeah. George Zimmerman is playing with guns around his girlfriend or with his girlfriend. But not only that, he's signing it now. Last week, two weeks ago, he was signing autographs at a gun show. <laughs> I'm not kidding. See, everything about Florida it seems it's like awesome. a bad, like, what is that guy? Carl Hy- Hyacin, Hylise? He he's a he's a detective uh, story writer, and all his things are set in Florida, and everyone in them is completely insane. Yeah, and it all sounds absurd when you read it, and then you realize, nope, nope, this is just headlines. They also seem to have a lot of problems with pizza down in Florida, not just not just. Well, the, sure, first of all, the pizza's probably terrible. Not just delivery, but also like here's a headline: A Florida man was upset that his wife didn't thaw the frozen pizza and shoved her face into a dog bowl. See, now that's not a, what I would call a pizza problem. That's a communication problem in my book. In another bad pizza story, a man punched the delivery boy after he forgot the garlic knots. Well, oh, look, even maybe I've got to draw the line somewhere. Maybe people were just reporting too many incidents. Do you know what I mean? I, you no, know, this is kind of like the shark attack thing where it's like so there was some weird pizza involved thing. So all of a sudden they said, pizza, that'll be our hook. On all the crazy stories that we have coming out of Florida. A Florida man whose hand was bitten off by a nine-foot alligator now faces charges for feeding the animal. (laughs) Here's one. A Florida man shot himself in the penis and testicles while claiming to be cleaning his gun. So I think there's a lot of just mistakes, just accidents. I, I I like the claiming part. Like, do we think he deliberately shot himself with the penis and testicles? Is that... Here's that a Florida man, a Florida man who's dead after competing in a bug eating contest at a reptile store. <laughs> See, that's just thinning the herd. I guess. Right I mean, I guess. I mean, I used to when I was a flight attendant, I flew to Florida all the time and probably like 16 cities in Florida. I flew in every one of those cities. One time, here's something that was sort of humorous. I was shooting a television show, Ready for the Weekend movie in Jacksonville, Florida. It was the weekend of the Super Bowl, and yeah. we were supposed to, you know, we're going down to sh- Jacksonville, but it's not the Super Bowl yet. This is weeks prior, yeah, yeah, but we're yeah. trying to pretend it's the Super Bowl yeah. because that when it's going to air that week of the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, we did these walk and talks. We used to do like 12 or 13 segments trying to find beautiful places to shoot in, oh, et cetera. Lord. When we got back, the producer, our director got in trouble because the producer was mad that we didn't get enough beauty shots. The, there was, were, weren't yeah. enough beautiful shots in Jacksonville. Okay, fast forward. Now it's Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> you might have been with me, Hannes. We're watching the Super Bowl, and as they cut away from one of the shots of, you know, the stadium in Jacksonville, they fade away to a drainage ditch. Yeah. That's the goddamn right. beauty There shot. is no beautiful shot of, of Jacksonville. Like, what the fuck are you talking There's about? There's a Hooters, and that's where I think where Hooters began in Jacksonville. And there's that. I still can't believe they have a friggin' NFL team. I cannot believe they have an NFL team. Now, the Miami Dolphins, those are some huge fans. I don't know if you know the... Oh, sure. You love Miami. But Miami, you know, that's another whole thing. It's like there's Florida North and Florida South. And Florida South is junior New York. Yeah. And Florida North is Alabama. Mm. And the two do not get, you know, they they do not see eye to eye at all. But I'll tell you something. The Gulf Coast is some of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen in my life. I mean, there's a place called Seaside, Florida, where they shot the Truman Show. Remember the Jim yeah, Carrey movie, yeah. The Truman Show? There is a town. That is the town where they have all those perfect buildings that looks like, you know, kind of a cookie cutter, perfect gingerbread yeah, beach town. To no, me. it's actually like stunningly beautiful, and there is extremely blue water in South Florida. I, I don't. I don't care. Okay, don't how care about this? Water. What about? Um, Sanibel Island, where you can like walk through a half a foot of of uh, of uh, sand dollars. I, I don't. None of this to me sounds appealing at all. There is. There are seashells to be found in Florida that are just. 
I like how you think if you keep upping what it is, I'm <laughs> what disgusting dead sea creature I'm walking through. That'll make it more appealing. Listen, to me. I'm just trying. I'm to not say, a fan of water some... and blueness. I'm sure that there. Well, this is the thing. I'm sure that it is possible to live in Florida and never get shot at, or never <laughs> shoot anybody, or never have anything weird happen to you. But it doesn't seem like it. Right. Here is a man who chopped off his victim's head, removed part of the brain and an eyeball, put the brain in the in the eyeball in a plastic bag, walked 12 blocks to the cemetery, and then ate them. <laughs> you see, you can't make this stuff up. No, you can't. I like that he was like, I'm, I'm going to let it ferment a little. <laughs> you know, you don't want to eat an eyeball right away. You okay. want to let it marinate. Well, look, you guys, tonight, our storyteller, Penelope Lombard. How many times has she been on the show, Hannes? Eight million times. And she always brings it. That's the thing, Hannes. She brings it. She has talked about Burning Man. She has talked about... One of her topics got some of the highest rating shows story worthy he's ever seen. And that topic was, I hate babies. Sure. I mean, uh, how, are we possibly because surprised that, that now she's a, talking uh, about that Florida? Is, that is something that, yeah, exactly. I hate <laughs> baby Floridians. It should have been the name of our, I hate babies that have more cocaine than me. That should have been the name of this topic. Listen, really she is something. a fantastic writer and comedian and storyteller. So we're super happy she is here. Uh, but before we get to the storyteller, Hannes, what should the folks do if they would like to support Storyworthy? Well, number one, you go to storyworthypodcast.com. Now, you can do two things there. You can click on the Amazon link, which takes you to Amazon. You can shop normally and we get a taste. Or you could give us some money directly. Which yeah, you can always nice donate. Thing. But here's what I really think is that if people, here's what you could do, folks. If you really want to help us out here, you tell a friend yes. or a family member or a coworker, and then it's just like that shampoo commercial in the 70s. Yes. Because then they tell two friends. And, and they tell two friends. And, and so, so on. And, and then so on. we dominate the world. Exactly. Because fuck the moth, fuck this American life. Yeah, yeah. Who the hell is just what, <laughs> story NPR? Worthy. Screw these. Guys. Hey, we. You know what? We've already driven off the air. That show, story, uh, the story with a guy who was NPR. He was on for ten years. Yeah. And he quit. You know, I quit because we fucking rammed yeah, his ass. That's right. That's right. We're story worthy, and we say the f word. Yeah, mother. Ladies and yes. gentlemen, wherever you are, stay tuned because Penelope Lombard is on her way here. Folks, guess what? Storyworthy is now dropping twice a week. Twice? What, 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 does this mean more work? It's a little bit. It's double the work is what it is, actually. Oh. But two brand new true stories coming at you every week from the Storyworthy podcast. I guess that is good because that's twice as much me. Twice as much me. I'm sorry. My earphones are cutting out. What did you say? <laughs> so tell your friends, tell your families, tell your enemies, tell everybody. Twice a week. Twice. Next time on Storyworthy, we have writer Matt Oswalt. And I'll be talking about the time I was an NBC page. That's next week on Storyworthy. Hey, this is Joe Bartnick from Puck Off, and you're listening to Storyworthy. And we're back. We've actually uh, left the state capitol. We're uh, going across the street to a t-shirt stand where I'm going to buy a big t-shirt that says, Florida, where America comes to die. (laughs) I've heard that. I've also heard uh, God's waiting room. Yes, yes, there's that. But I don't think anyone in Florida is, they're all going to hell. There's a lot of extremes going on. Like I said before, there's a lot of elderly people, but then you've got all the young kids going to Disney. So it's either they're very it's young It's kind of like a old. giant small town. It's like there's kids who want out, and then there's old people who are like, why don't you just shut up? <laughs> well, listen, and, if you're an elderly person, what a great place to, I mean, to be amongst your peers and to have all the facilities right there and available, I think it'd be a great place to retire. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm going to retire back to Wisconsin or something. I'll show them. That's all right, you guys, she's here right now, Penelope Lombard. She is a comedian and a writer, like I said. You know, Hannah, she's written jokes for Joan Rivers. Speaking of old people. <laughs> on her weekly series, Fashion Police. And then she also wrote for the soup spinoff, The Dish. And she's also voiced characters for King of the Hill. I do love her voice. All right, you guys, you can find her at PenelopeLombard.com. Wherever you are, please put your hands together for Penelope Lombard. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to read about something, some stuff that happened 
while I was in Florida for a long time. All right, here we go. And it starts with wildlife. Lady sea turtles lay their nests around the time they turn 30 years old, and they always return to the same place they were born. Now, I like that they wait until they're 30 and don't rush into the wrong relationship with the wrong man turtle. But the part where they return to their home is tough. Sea turtles need total darkness to lay their eggs, which I can totally understand because I need a remote location and total silence even to pee. But a lot has changed for female sea turtles recently. If you think about it, their grandmothers laid eggs on a very different Miami beach, one without a hotel or a beach Zumba class or a cheesy beach bar called Caliente. This is part of the reason sea turtles are endangered, which is why at 7 a.m. I was walking the beach searching for sea turtle nests to protect. It wasn't Miami, it was Gasparilla Island, a small island whose beach is peppered with the fourth mansions of the top 0.01%. My parents weren't anywhere near this group, economically or politically, but they had a small house, their only house, elsewhere on the island. I had fallen all apart in Los Angeles and moved in with them on this remote, underpopulated island. It's hard to put a positive spin on giving up and moving in with your parents when you're in your 40s, but if you can, please email me later. Now summer, and after many visits to the ER, my heart was being monitored because it kept stopping. It was broken, which is basically what I'd been saying over and over for most of my life, but I had meant emotionally because people are dicks and I'm possibly too sensitive. The few women on the island during the summer took sea turtles very seriously. They went to church together, and like all good Christians, they were power hungry. So who got to be in charge of turtle patrol was something they'd fight to the death over. Grace Harvey was in charge, and her competition, a very nice woman named Kathy, was now shunned and ridiculed. Kathy knew a lot about turtles, and she wanted to help, and they really hated that. One time, she had dared to remind Grace to put out the markers for the nests. Grace had indeed let Turtle Patrol down. Now, I think it was because she broke her hip. A lot of people in Florida break their hip. What Grace lost in her physical vitality, she made up for in her lust for power over turtles and the people who volunteered to help them. <laughs> Kathy was less about the power and more about the turtles, and I could see how that hadn't served her. I was less about the turtles and more about muttering how nuts these women were and how if I didn't see a turtle soon, I was going to snap an egret's neck. I strolled the beach with my friend Mel. She was the only person my age on the island, so we were friends. Turtle patrol was the only activity on the island, so there I was. Grace was part of a group of old ladies about 80 to 95 years old, unless they were lying about their age and they were really in their hundreds, but I don't think you even do that at that age. A few of the group were well enough to slowly walk the beach searching for turtle nests. And by the way, that's how boring this was. Most of the time, we were just hoping to find a mound of sand that might be a turtle nest. So to be clear, identifying what might constitute a small pile of sand was the most exciting thing that could happen. That was a good day. And finding a pile of sand didn't even happen every day. I noticed that although many of the ladies had ailments that came with age, all of the ladies were well enough to gossip about Kathy and the uppity rude ways she had dared to talk about turtle duties. My friend Mel noticed it too, but it didn't bother her as much. In fact, it was the opposite. She loved the ladies. She desperately wanted them to like her. I tried my best to shit all over her dream of being accepted by these crab apples by arguing that gaining the approval of assholes made you an asshole, but she was not open to my feedback. In fact, I could tell that Mel was stunned and offended at how dark my thoughts were, but I also knew she would forgive me because I had a heart problem. So inwardly, I had a talk with myself. I made a secret vow. I would not say negative, hateful things to the only friend I had. On Sunday nights on Gasparilla, there was nothing to do. There was also nothing to do on Monday through Saturday nights. <laughs> well, there was one thing on Sundays. The same old ladies had a cocktail party called Vespers. That's amusing that it was called Vespers, because Vespers is a thing that nuns do. That was the funniest joke that I heard all summer. 
Mel always went to Vespers, and because of it, she considered herself a lucky duck. She excitedly told me how she had scored an invite because her neighbor, Pat, was part of the group. To Mel, it was an exclusive event, which she was greatly honored to be included in. My mouth gaped open, but I said nothing because of my vow to not be a demon from hell. Pat also got me an invite to Vespers, and Mel couldn't believe my good fortune. Hmm. I was in my 40s, jobless, single, had a heart problem, lived with my parents on an island inhabited by elderly, politically conservative Catholic women, and my only activity was pounding stakes around piles of sand that might possibly turn out to be turtle nests unless they didn't. Good fortune was not what came to my mind, but again I thought of my vow. I knew in my weakened and unstable heart that the vow included not punching Mel in the throat, so instead I accepted the invite to Vespers. For Vespers, everyone brought food to share because rich old ladies couldn't possibly supply the food at their own stupid parties. Mel confessed to me that previously her appetizers hadn't gone over well. I thought that was great because then you'd just take it home and eat it yourself. Hmm, what could I bring that was spicy and full of lactose? (laughs) What food can you not eat if you take Lipitor, I wondered. I tried to help Mel by pointing out that hummus, sashimi, or any kind of kebab might be considered a food that other kinds of people eat, like poor people or terrorists. <laughs> Mel nodded like she understood, then went to look up a recipe for mini knishes, and I felt kind of sorry for her. Regardless, my crackers and meat plate was a success. <laughs> and I was a hit at Vespers. The ladies were all very nice, and they loved me, which makes sense. I'm quite delightful. I brought crackers and meat. I have blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> Mel, on the other hand, didn't receive enough love from her mother, brought knishes, and is half Jewish. But Mel deeply desired their approval, and she drank a lot of wine, so I'm pretty sure that won them over in the end. Plus, by the end of the summer, she was attending their Catholic church. I mean, she really wanted these ladies to like her. After that evening, I never went back to Vespers. My heart continued to fail, and I ended up having to get a pacemaker to keep it going. Very few of the sea turtles that hatch each year even make it to the ocean. Of the ones that do, very few of those live, and very few return to lay their eggs and keep life going. I sometimes wonder why the same stuff in this story that gave Mel hope and determination made my heart give up. You're such a good writer, Penelope. Oh, thank you. Listen, this is what I'm taking away from your whole experience in Florida, <laughs> is that you are such a great writer. Oh, my goodness. That's so nice. I mean, I felt like I was there in terms of the slow pace of life. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, these ladies were very nice. I just was like, I can't get into this. And they're educated women. Um, or have they had careers? I don't know if they had they... college when they went. No, yes, they are. These older women that are in their mm-hmm. 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, and some of them are kind of interesting. I remember talking to one, of course, comparing it with a time like now when it's hard to get a job. Uh, this one woman, Pat, kind of fell into a really big job because the men at the time were off to war. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. She was like, so they asked me to run the company. Like that, one of those kind what of stories. What was Mel's career? What, why was Mel there on that island? Um, Mel, Trojans. She made Trojans. No, Mel's no, she a, was your age. She's our age. Yeah, she's oh, really see. interesting. And she th- she planned for during the year to be traveling in South America. She's she probably said, looking for more turtles. Wait, no. she said she was going to South America, but she, she just went to Florida? Well, her parents have a place there, and so she went to stay there for a few months before she... Embarks on her big trip. Yeah, went I see. on this journey. Because everybody who's on Gasparilla Island, obviously under the age of, say, 70 or 80, has to have a story. Why are they there? Right. Yeah, you're, you're in a sitcom on TV land, basically. <laughs> That's exactly what... It, it's funny, you were talking about the, the sort of, you know, juvenile bitching between them. I used to go visit my old landlady uh, in Culver here in Culver City. I mean, back across the country in Culver City. And, you know, she's literally like 91 years old. And and I'd be like, oh, we're going to have lunch, which is like, oh, this is fabulous. It was a really high-end place. And it's like she's like, oh, I usually... And she was from Wales, so she had a very elegant accent, and uh, which I'm not doing correctly. She was like, oh, I used to sit over there with Betty, but she's such a bitch. 
And I'm like, you're 90. It Are you never still, changes. You never it, change. It, it's just like the eighth grade. Yeah, except it's just a different social, the social structure doesn't change. Just yeah. The ages change. Right. Yeah, and everybody's acting exactly the same. It's like, oh, it's unbelievable. And so tell us a little bit more about, I mean, I'm, I really want to get into the heart stuff, but just a little bit more about the Turtle Patrol. Did right. they save well, so lives? Near to the end of this, so this was earlier in the summer, and it was a lot of walking the beach to, um, to find possible nests, and then you have to mark them. And then later in the year, because I was there a long time, they, they start to hatch, and if they hatch... They're supposed to hatch at night, so the turtles are kind of guided to the water by yeah, the reflection. Yeah, th- I've seen. And there remember be no lights on the beach, which yeah. is really relevant to what's going on today with the buildup in Florida. Think about it: the beaches with hotels and all. Are they going to turn off all their lights? No, they're so not. So that you know. But I, they I seem to remember some National Geographic special with these Big turtles issue. coming out, or maybe yeah. with sixty minutes, and them all going into the water. Yeah, there's a good movie. I forget what it's called, but something with turtle in the title. Is it called <laughs> Call to the Turtle? It's not Ninja Ones. But turtle Gangbang? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is know. it called Turtle Patrol? It's called Turtle, the boring version. Uh, no, 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 it's fascinating. But it's obviously, how did you get involved with that group? Oh, just because it's a thing to do on the island, and they need people to walk the beach. Right. And, and you um, probably needed to walk. But they don't need and a Mel, new president actually, because they have that. Right, and because Mel was, invo- <laughs> Mel was involved in everything. You know? Right. She has, like, spirit and, and excitement for everything. <laughs> so, God, I hate that. And also, at the time, I was, my heart was being monitored, so I couldn't. I could walk, but I couldn't do it. Okay, other so things. you leave Los Angeles, and you say you broke down. What, what do you mean? I just didn't. I didn't feel well. But um, you had been living in LA for how long? Like twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. I and did. then all of a sudden, you. Well, leave. I don't know if it was sudden, but over the year before I left, at least over that year, but probably even longer. But gradually, I didn't. I I didn't have the same energy, um, and I felt down I had more trouble sleeping or I'd wake startled or I'd wake confused or you know things mm-hmm. like that at the same time I was out of work at that time and you know had gone through some things so I really thought all of these things were just depression and anxiety but I you know because I could make a case for that you can always sure. make a case for that no I, can I just say as a person who's had plenty <laughs> yeah. of depression and anxiety it is unfortunate because sometimes you'll just be like I remember I came back many years ago from uh, from Germany, and uh, that's important to the story because I'm like, oh, I'm so lethargic. I'm like, oh, I went to visit my mom, and I'm depressed about this and that. And it turns out I got adult set adult chicken pox right, from sick. the flight. It's like the last thing that occurs to you is that you might actually be sick. Yeah, and it you did. might not. How just did you be, find out you had that? Did you have dots on your face? Because eventually I went to the doctor, and uh, yeah, I had wow. the lumps, and he said, "You got chicken pox." So I said, "I had chicken pox." He said, "You got it again." Wow, which I didn't think was possible. That's well, unusual. now we know. I didn't so, know that either. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so when you left yeah. LA, you intended to? I just thought, you know what? I'm not doing well here. I don't feel well. I'm anxious. I'm upset. And I'm just going to get out of here. And I felt very strongly I had to get out of here. So I just Isn't got rid of my place. Yeah, and a lot of people were saying, well, I mean, I wasn't even in touch with all my friends and all, but my family and a few friends that I was were saying, well, what's the rush? And I was like, I don't know, but I got to leave now. So it's like you had an internal clock telling you, I got to shake this up because something's wrong with my heart. I mean, you didn't know anything about your heart then, right? No, I didn't. And then... But innately, it seems like your body knew that you needed to get some care. I did feel kind of alarmed and like, no, I have to get out of here. And I couldn't... It was a hard time because, again, I wasn't feeling great. My life wasn't going great. So I wasn't out all the time and in touch with people. And plus, I didn't know how to totally explain it. And then when I went to Florida, I think it only took three weeks before I started passing out. And getting symptoms that led you to the hospital. Right. Or having symptoms. So you're passing out in Florida, and that leads you to say, wait a minute, I need a physical. Or what did you... No, then I had to go to the ER. Oh, because you passed out to the point of being unconscious? Right. Oh, no. And then I had to get stitches and things. Okay, I didn't... But this was not in the story. No. Okay, so when you get to Florida, you're doing Sea Turtle Patrol, you're meeting friends, you're right. not, you're, you haven't been, in, friend. you haven't been invaded to Vespers yet. I mean, let's <laughs> no, not no, race no. ahead. Right. Yeah, yeah. But when, where were you when you passed out? Um, well, one time I was in the bathroom. Well, one time, I think one of the first times I was, started feeling weird, I said, oh, I don't feel well, I'm going to go lie down. 
And I got almost to the bed, but then I just passed out. And I think I hit my head on the side table. Wow, how scary. And then, yeah, one time in the bathroom. and But so anyway, so I'd have to go to the emergency room. So it wasn't physical exertion. Your heart was just stopping or giving up. It would up. stop. It would just stop. It was like an electrical system So failure. Florida is a good place to have this problem, right? It's like the capital of pacemakers, I'm sure. So Pacemaker what's cap. the name of the hospital you went to? I ended up going to Sarasota I see. Memorial Hospital. But I... So it took a long time because of it's very unusual at my age. It's an electrical system issue, but it's just really unusual at my age. And so they had to, I had to go see a cardiologist, then they had to monitor it, then they had to order another monitor that would take a month once I got it. And Were you doing things like stress tests at the hospital? Like I on, did have on to go wa- to the hospital. Treadmills? Well, I had to go to the hospital um, I guess overnight, and I had to do a stress test. One where they, one where they just put you on a slant for about a half an hour. That's strange. And the doctor said, "Well, you'll definitely pass out during this," because he thought it was something else. I guess he said for sure you'll pass out. And then I just stayed on my slant, talking to the <laughs> nurse, <laughs> chatting with the with nurse. Slanting with your head up or your head down. Um. It's like you're tilted back just a little. Okay, so it's not table. that your head's below your feet. It's not. No, that. It's no, you're just... and you're barely tilted, so it's very strange that most people will pass out. And that. wow, that's so interesting. I don't even know, but I didn't pass out, and then he was really surprised. Then they also at that time did a test. I think where they kind of more put you under and go in and okay, stimulate so your heart or something. Then there's a culmination of uh, my months go by. They keep monitoring you. And then when do they say, we need to put a pacemaker in? Well, then I was being monitored, um, you know, on what uh, I had a month or two month monitor on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the and it gets transmitted to the company. I was passing out a lot for short, you know, a few seconds. But then the woman called me one time. It's supposed the data is supposed to go to my doctor's office, but apparently they weren't on it. So the woman from the company called me just to see how I was. And I knew it was going to be for me because I knew I had just passed out. Yeah. And she said, "Well, did your doctor call?" And I, I said, "Well, no. You know, you just but hi. You know, that's so interesting. <laughs> I never so they get have calls a, here, a so this is exciting. System, so they know that yeah. you passed out. Somebody knew. Yeah. And then the thing is, it didn't get sent to my doctor. So then the next morning. It happened again, and she called, and she said, you know, I'm really, I can't advise you of anything, but if I were you, wow, I'd call your doctor. Yeah. I felt so bad for her, especially in hindsight, because she's looking at this thing going, this woman might die. Oh, my gosh, Penelope. And I'm not allowed to tell her. She sounds like she could be being played by Halle Berry or Sandra Bullock. No, It's like 911 or something. Like, uh, you know, like you could see the trailer now. <laughs> this summer, yeah. you know, the phone written. She you know, keeps calling me. You know, she passes out. The phone oh, yeah. rings. And you know yeah. who will play her, of course, Halle Berry. That's I just said oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. You just said that. I missed it. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so listen, right Penelope, you get a pacemaker put in. Let's fast forward. How do you make a decision to return to L.A.? Um, I don't know. I just, you know, probably the way I made the other one. I'm just doing it. You seem like an L.A. person to me. I am. You have so much creativity just pouring out of you. How I could also, you be confined to a beach with, you know, trying to protect yeah. sand? I think it's admirable to protect yeah. sea turtles. Right. But I think I that like those people the belong doing that. You I like know? the outdoors. Yeah. I love when I'm indoors and the outdoors are on television and you're, I'm watching them. That I like. I love pictures of the outdoors, but I don't. <laughs> That's my favorite way to enjoy the outdoors. I know. It's a clear I'm photo. Not, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I do like being outside, but I have to put on 50 sunblock, and I don't know. I'm not just an outdoor person. So that right. whole thing of walking the beach, yes, that's nice, but I don't, I don't After live a while, to do that every yeah. day. I need more different kinds of people around, stimulation, art. Art. Creative things. Yeah. Just a more... And did you experience when you were down there in Florida? Did you experience any of the wackiness like Hannes and I were just talking about? Like, and their local news is it just wacky story after wacky story, or do they not even think they're wacky anymore? Well, I think a lot of it, you know, the, you're you're highlighting the wackiest stuff. Sure, sure. But I do also think it's a different political climate. It's certainly a, a state that has a strange mix of ages and populations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But 
uh, one thing I noticed was that um, a paper that, you know, it was a pretty big paper, it, when it would come out on some day of the week, they would list, for instance, women that had been arrested um, on charges of prostitution, and they'd have their photos in the paper. And these were not women who had been convicted. Um, convicted. Wow. And I noticed that there's never a picture of some guy in here that's done this you know it really was that's shocking i know i thought there were so many backward things um did you notice a lot of prescription drug places in florida because they say that's like the the key state to go if you want prescription drugs like anybody in any strip mall any kind of doctor will sign over oh. you know out of van or whatever you want have you oh, did you see that should, i wish i had known that before the prescription <laughs> drug saved trade. a whole lot of trouble i think that was um, also my boyfriend scott pelly no, on 60 know. minutes talking i don't about know that. i have no idea about that hmm yeah. Okay, so now you're back in L.A., and do you have, are you trying to set goals for yourself, or do you, like, how do you live after such a brush with death? Oh, well, now Like, in terms I, of your day-to-day thinking. I know, sometimes I get uh, nervous, but um, I feel better. I'm so glad. Yeah, I feel better, and I think even emotionally I feel better, because my whole system isn't mm-hmm. sort of um, fading, you know. And um, so I do feel better. And I do love being in L.A. And it's exciting. And I get to be around more friends and people my age. Um, But, yeah, I'm kind of having to start over because it was a long time. There was a time I wasn't doing well before I left. Then the whole almost a year of being away. And I'm staying with my aunt right now. Oh, that's nice. And she is in her 80s. So I haven't, like, gone cold turkey. (laughs) Listen, you you really have an By the way, don't you feel young and vibrant now? Because oh. it's right when you're over 40, it's possible you're like, oh, I'm so yes. old. And you go hang out in Florida for a while, you're like, I am a stud. Listen, yeah, I play tennis. You my uh, All my tennis, not all my tennis friends, but a lot of my tennis friends are in their 70s and 80s. Makes and, you feel uh, good. I, well, they have so much to say. They I think do. Elderly people, to me, are really great to be around because they have experience and they're often very funny. Yeah, they are. And they're... Because they have something to draw upon and they don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's my favorite part about because... Uh, I don't, I'm finally getting old enough to where my I don't give a fuck is starting to make more sense to people. Yeah. <laughs> when you're 25 and you're like, I don't give a fuck, people are like, well, you're a snotty asshole. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, oh, okay, well, you've been around. No, I never gave a fuck. But right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, we are always happy to have you on, on uh, Storyworthy, Penelope. Oh, it's so nice yes. to be here, and I really appreciate it. Hey, do you want to play some Chuck on Storyworthy? Yes. It can only mean one thing. It's time for Shotgun Storyworthy. The game where our storyteller spins the storyworthy wheel of truth and tells a true one-minute story about the topic it lands on. So everybody, say it with me. Spin that wheel! Okay, the word is plans. I've had so many, it's difficult. But, uh... More recently, actually, this was a couple years ago, before I even got a writing job on TV, and I thought, well, I have to get a job. I'm taking my ego out of this. I'm just going to go work at Starbucks. So I got my resume together, and I said, look, you know, this is hard for me, but I'll be working at Starbucks, and okay. And I went into Starbucks, and I turned over my resume to a girl with braces. And as she took my resume, I thought, oh, I get it. They're not going to hire me. (laughs) This girl with braces doesn't want me. And uh, fortunately, that plan didn't work out because of better things came. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I, lo- I love that Starbucks story because people do seem to think like, well, if I can't do anything else, I'll just go down and work at Starbucks. Right. It's like, no, you fucking won't because those people are like, they, they're coveted jobs. They have benefits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, also, I wouldn't be good at it. Yeah, well, it's, you do have to you do I'd have be to like, multitask. You'll get whatever milk I put in there. Yeah, no, yeah. you do have to <laughs> you know, multitask. Yeah. There's, People there's be the farting all the over the cup. place when you're... Like, yeah. <laughs> and they no, never get your name right. And I would, I would not get the no, name right. No, but I just think it's funny that people assume people. that you could get a job at Starbucks or a job at Trader Joe's. No, you know what? Yeah, Trader Joe's. Costco is like a great place to work. They have great benefits. It's a great company. It's like, you would, can't just get no, a job. But I would Although, eat all the samples. I will say, in yeah. Pittsburgh, where I'm from, there are a lot of jobs in those retail stores uh, for the, you know, for help wanted, like yeah. in Starbucks, help wanted, help wanted, Barnes and Noble, places yeah. like that. But that's back east, not in LA. Yeah. No, in, in LA, LA, you want to be a waitress, you better have a goddamn yeah. good looking headshot, number one. You have to be yeah. really pretty. You got to be very pretty. You want to be a bartender, you <laughs> yeah. better come in in a swimsuit. And guess what? <laughs> Forever 21's not going to hire me, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe you know. Forever 49 would. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> forever 60. Give me a few years. No, but it is it is a difficult uh, climate to get any job, but especially in L.A., you know, those jobs that people would think are no big deal are actually quite a big deal. Right. And the people that have them, I think, are very good at them and, sure, you know, work really hard and all. So, yeah, I... I, I never have a but problem with daunting. my chai my chai tea latte with soy. That's what yeah. I like. A yeah, chai tea latte with soy is $4.65. But could everybody do me one favor? <laughs> when you're at Starbucks, even if you don't want it, could you please ask for almond milk? Because I would like it. And the more people that ask, you don't. Ha- then you can say, "Oh, I don't want it." But um, you want to plant but, but the buzzword. You don't even have to say that because they don't. You want have them it. to start supplying yes. almond milk. Yes, and uh, I do think we should all ask. Okay, so plant the almond milk. Bu- yeah. Do they have the rice almond- milk? Because that's yeah. my new thing. Is they like I'm, I'm making my cereal with rice milk now. Yeah, it's better mm. for you. It's, la- it's lactose. It's lactose free, isn't it? Rice milk and almond milk. There's no. Yeah, there's no, yeah, lactose. There's no fat, which is my main. And almond problem. milk is good. Yeah. And they don't have it, so don't worry. You won't get it. But just ask. <laughs> I see. You're just... <laughs> but just ask. We're just trying yeah. to plant the and seed. And also... Well, okay. I have a... Go ahead. No, you can talk about people... Okay, see, I have a name that no one... I know they won't spell it right. I know they won't say it right. So I, when I go to Starbucks, I'm John. Yeah, just Which, say of course, John. ends up Easier. being that I hear John called 10 times. I'm like, right. where is this fucking <laughs> asshole? And then I remember it's me. But it's like, so all of you, yeah. just Bob, John, Jane, just... Eliminate your actual name and your ego at Starbucks because it's always going to be wrong. There's a guy, there's a girl from Guatemala, and she's trying to read the handwriting of a guy from Venezuela, and it's a Swedish name, and it's never. It's, it's just, the colors of un- Bennington. Yeah, it's just unfortunate Bennington? to even have no, to listen to. No, not Bennington. Benetton. 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 Bennington is a Here's college, a little gift I'd like to share real quick with our listeners. Yes. If you are in Starbucks or the coffee bean and tea leaf, always ask always say it's to go. You know, at the yeah. end they say, is this for here to go? You always say to go. Why is that, Hannes? So it has a cap. So you don't pay the sales tax. Yep. You really? only pay sales tax if you stay in the restaurant. Say that and everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. You. So always say to go, even though you're going to eat it or drink really? it right there. Really? Yeah. That's And you can say good. to go with a plate, and you can put that plate in the back. No, that's not true. <laughs> can you say to go, but I'm going to sit here? Yeah, man. No, well, they don't. And everybody dare you to charge. No, everybody's funny. on to the scam. They come out to you and they're like, uh, we need 48 cents. You're no, you still always, inside yeah. the building. <laughs> always say to go. Okay. Oh, well, okay. As long as we're doing secret codes. And by the way, I'm going to do that from now on. Uh, you know, if you go to a Del Taco, which I know Christine will never do. And it's you so say, good. It's so much I would like, I, I would like it. And whatever I'm ordering, go bold. Oh. Go bold means an extra forty nine cents. They put the secret special sauce Whoa. and French fries in anything that you have ordered. Wow. And what is the special sauce? It's a white sauce, white sauce. dirty, which goes on the uh, 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 on the chicken soft taco. It's very good. How bold is it? It's not very bold. It's not very spicy. I don't know why it's called. It's extreme flavor. You know, that's a great company that really hires from within and people that start working there move up. And it is run by a woman that I think did start just as a kid working there. Miss Del Taco? Yes, and just it's run by a woman, and I like that. Yeah. I like that. In the Ladies taco. are smart. She uh, right. was, yeah. They also used to do improv there. Del Close worked, <laughs> right. and it was just called Taco. And then when he came, they called it Del Taco. That's a joke for like ten people. Now I'll say this: the word Taco Cat is the same backwards and forwards. Yeah, Taco Cat. Ladies Except and that's gentlemen, not a word. We got to wrap it up. The genius joke. Right about By the now. way, do you know the Taco Bell? Do you know why it's called Taco Bell? Why? Not because of like we're gonna ring a bell and you're gonna come Run get tacos. To the, border. the guy's name was Bell. Excellent. Oh. Excellent. His name was like Bob good Bell. Good information. All right, you this guys, we're gonna stuff. wrap it up right about now. Did you now. know that A and W root beer? Never mind. <laughs> thank you for coming, Penelope. Thank you. It's thank always you. a delight. And I'd like to thank everybody here at Sideshow Network, including Anthony Bench, whose birthday Yay. it is. Happy birthday, Anthony. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy and birthday. Sean Merrick. And of course, John Thomas Griffith. You know, he wrote the theme song "Follow Me." He did. He did. And then he went to an island and looked for a turtle, and he never found it. No, but he did get a pacemaker put in recently. It so seems it all to be comes quite around. A, uh, maybe we're the link. Maybe we cause people to get pacemakers. And on behalf of our storyteller tonight, Penelope Lombard, and of course, Johannes Finney, my dear friend and co-host, my name is Christine Blackburn, saying, make it a story-worthy week. Yeah.